Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so happy to have you with us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. This is a webinar, and you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions for presenters at any time. When you're um, asking questions in the Q&A, we do encourage that you list the institution you're asking the question to. This helps our presenters get to those questions a little bit quicker for you. Um, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And this is just one of many sessions happening today, so be sure to go and sign up for more. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at strivescan.com backslash PCACAC. And now I'd like to turn it over to our wonderful group of presenters today, starting with Newman University. How are you all doing today? Uh, one moment. So um, welcome to Newman University. My name is Luke Chalmers. I am the undergraduate admission counselor here for uh, Chester County, Maryland, DC, and Virginia. Uh, a little bit about Newman. We are a small liberal arts school uh, located in Aston, Pennsylvania, uh, which is about 25 minutes south of Philadelphia. So we're still very close to the Jersey Shore, New York City, Wilmington, Baltimore. So don't throw those away from everything like that. Uh, we were founded in 1965 by the Sisters of St. Francis of Philadelphia. Uh, we are a Catholic in, um, institution in the Franciscan tradition, and one of the main things uh, that separates us from some of our competitors are the rises values that we stand by. So, uh, reverence, integrity, service, excellence, and uh, stewardship, and these are all represented by the distinctions on the slide here. Uh, despite everything going on uh, during this crazy year, we are still able to give a quality uh, education for our students and giving them a good foundation uh, for the future move forward too. Another way we do that is that we all of our students are required to complete an internship uh, or a field experience or a clinical during the time here. So giving them that professional development right off the bat as well here. A little bit about the numbers. Again, we are a relatively small school, uh, 2,400 students and 48 uh, different academic programs. Average class size of 22 with student uh, faculty ratio of 14 to 1. Uh, so you'll be given that individualized attention from you know, then the admissions process all the way to graduation. Uh, you won't be lost in the weeds. Faculty you know you by your name and know, you know where you want to go, what your goals are, how to best help you achieve those goals as well. Uh, we have 24 Division III uh, varsity teams. Uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, we have four residence halls on campus, all suite style. So there's no need to take a shower. Caddy walk all the way down the halls and all the way back for the two different meal bathrooms. Private bathroom right there. You share it with about three or four other people. So, you know, a nice, you know, don't worry, you're not worried about sharing. That's what's nice. Uh, we also have, we also uh, give uh, merit scholarships to virtually all the students who apply. Again, I'll go into detail about that later. Here are the academic programs all that we offer. Uh, I'll highlight a couple of them. Um, we have biology that has a bunch of different ways of paths you can go down. We want to highlight clinical lab sciences, very important uh, thing in today's world. Uh, we have 100% job placement with this major and for the past couple of years, so we're very proud of that. Uh, criminal justice, again, very popular because of the different routes you can go down. We have a partnership with the Municipal uh, Police Academy for students who want to go down to law enforcement. We also have a four plus one program for forensic accounting uh, for those who want to go on the white collar crime or that investigative route as well. Two new majors, uh, cybersecurity and data science analytics, uh, two rising fields in the business world. We want to make sure we're ahead of the curve with that. And then nursing, we're very much a nursing school. Uh, we prepare students for those next, for those, for those next steps, clinic, whatever that's preparing for clinical, it's preparing for the NCLEX which we have a 92% passing rate. So we do it, give our students a great foundation moving forward. We also have a handful of pre-professional programs as well. So again, we make sure our students are able to take those next steps if they go, uh, depending on where you wanna go. Uh, we also give, uh, have a bunch of academic resource, resources for students, you know, uh, tutoring both individual and group, writing services, students coming in wherever they are in the writing process, disability services. So if you have programs uh, that, uh, throughout high school that you wanna carry over into college, uh, we will uh, be able to give you that as well. Academic coaching, so students who are looking to, you know, having a little trouble with the adjustment and want some help with that. Um, they have, uh, you know, time management skills, study habits, how to make that adjustment a little smoothly uh, from high school to college. Then career and personal development, getting you ready for, you know, help you find internships and then getting you ready for the, you know, interview prep, resume building, uh, just kind of getting you ready for those next steps after, uh, after graduation, after your time at Newman. 
Here are our, our varsity teams. We are a D3 school. We compete in the Atlantic East Conference. On the left, we have our varsity teams. On the right, we have all our club teams. Uh, one kind of idea of time commitment wise, you know, varsity teams, you're that stereotypical college athlete. It's a little more consuming, but not all consuming. Uh, club teams will be very similar to a high school varsity team. So as far as that time commitment. If you want uh, to uh, you want contact information for any of the coaches, I'll be more happy to do that to you in the chat afterwards. So now down to the nuts and bolts of the application process. Yeah, uh, both our application and the common app opens August 1st. Uh, so that's the date you should probably, uh, remember for our juniors here. We do have an early action deadline, which is non-binding in the uh, beginning of December. If you uh, apply by, uh, by the early action deadline, we guarantee you a uh, decision by Christmas. After that, we go into a, a roll on admission. So you send in your application uh, and with all the required items and we'll guarantee you a decision by two, two weeks afterwards after everything's processed. We are test optional moving forward as well too. So all you need to do is send in your high school transcripts. Though we highly encourage students to send in uh, the test course if they have taken them, also take them as well. They can only help your application. We do have a no harm policy. So if for some reason your uh, test course harm, harm your application, we won't hold that against you as well. And also send in you know, a letter of recommendation from counselor or teacher or send in, an, and also send in an essay as well too. So here are the merit scholarships as well. They correspond directly to your high school, uh, your high school GPA. Uh, these amounts uh, will change going into fall 2022, just by uh, $1,000, but nonetheless, it gives you an idea of what we offer as far as merit scholarships. But then here are some other scholarships and grants that we offer our students, you know, just information straight off their application. So no need for additional, uh, any applications or forms to fill out. So keep that in mind as well. So thank you guys for coming. I appreciate uh, your time. We have visits coming throughout the summer and into the fall as well, both virtual and in person. I'll send in that in the chat for you. So thank you for your time and have a nice day, y'all. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Arcadia University. Hi, everyone. Let me just get my screen share. Are you able to see my screen? Wonderful. Um, um, yep. Oh. Yep, perfect. Okay, so my name is Meg Mack. I'm an admissions counselor at Arcadia University as well as a, an alum. So I can tell you a little bit about the professional side as well as the student experience too. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about Arcadia today. Um, so we're located right in Glenside, Pennsylvania, which is about 20 minutes outside of Center City, Philadelphia. And yes, we do have a castle on campus. It's actually um, based off of Elmway Castle in England, which is where the first two Harry Potter films were uh, filmed. So we do joke that we have our own kind of Hogwarts on campus. We have about 2,000 undergraduate students, so you really get that personalized attention. Um, our average class size is about 14. I think the largest class I ever had was about 16, with the smallest about three. Um, so you really get that personal attention with your professors and chances to kind of um, advance professionally and personally as well. Um, we have over 65 fields of study, everything from we have accelerated programs like our doctorate of physical therapy, a short admissions programs, we have international business, um, pretty much any major you can think of. And one of my tour guides recently described Arcadia as an open door school. So what they meant by that was not just someone who's going to hold a door for you on campus, but that the opportunities that you'll have on campus, you know, professors and staff will open doors for you that you never knew you wanted to walk through. We are also Division Three, um, so we have 26 Division Three teams. We are part of the Middle Atlantic Conference, um, and our newest teams we have track and field, hockey, and even esports. So we are Division One for esports. Uh, your time at college isn't just about your academics. So we do have over 60 clubs and activities on campus, everything from empowerment groups to an equestrian club to Society for Castle Restoration. And it's really easy to create a club if for some reason you can't find something you're interested in. We do guarantee housing for all four years. We have housing starting with first year residence halls. We have suite style housing as well as apartment style housing and first year students can even live in the castle if they choose. 
So Arcadia is really well known for our study abroad programs. We've been ranked number one in study abroad participation for almost 10 years now. Um, and 80% of our students typically use their passports before graduation. And that's in unique programs, everything from our first year study abroad experience, which starts spring your first year to spring preview, which happens for first year students over spring break to year long, semester long, summer internships, pretty much any type of program you can find, you can think of. You do not have to study abroad, but one of the benefits at Arcadia is that all of your financial aid travels with you and all of your classes transfer back. So it's a really easy way to get some unique experiences. And we have partnerships with great schools like the University of Oxford um, and other really well-known programs as well. So to apply to Arcadia, we are rolling admissions. So usually in August of your senior year, you can start your application. Um, we, we take either the common application or our own online application, no preference. Um, we do see the common app more commonly um, for students just because it is easier. So feel free to fill that out. We require an official high school transcript. And if you have any college transcripts, you can send those along as well. And we require one letter of recommendation from either a school counselor or teacher. But if you have others, you can feel free to send them. The more information we have, the better, because we do review your application holistically. So we look at everything. We are test optional. So that means if your SAT or ACT scores weren't great or you weren't able to take them, um, you don't have to send them. Um, if you're unsure whether or not to send scores that you have, you can always reach out to your admissions counselor and we'll let you know if it would actually help you with um, scholarships or if it's better to not send them. Um, you can also include an essay or a resume. Um, I always recommend this, particularly if you had kind of a rough year or semester, it helps us really review your application and give you um, the best chance of admissions. And if you're looking for any of our fine art programs or theater, we do have portfolio and acting auditions that are required for those programs. So I just want to thank you. If you have any questions, I did put my email address right here in the bottom corner and I'll be here to answer any other questions you have. Um, but it was nice to meet all of you and I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thank you so much, Arcadia. Next up, we have Chatham University. Hi everyone. Normally I have a presentation, but my uh, VPN is not working from home today. Thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday. Um, so like I said, my name is Cassidy Adabri-Lehi. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Chatham University. We uh, at Chatham are located in Shadyside, which is in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I always say that Chatham is like the Narnia of Pittsburgh because you really don't know that uh, we are in the city until you enter onto our campus. Looking at kind of this overall screen, it seems like we are really quaint and it could be in the middle of the forest, but no, we are in a very populated area in Pittsburgh. Um, our campus is about 2,400 students, 13 of which are undergrad, and then the other 1,100 are grad level students. Um, we have a combination of students and some of them could be uh, bachelor slash grad students with our inter integrated degree process. Those integrated degrees um, allow you to start within our campus. And let's say you wanted to do physician's assistant studies, you would start off as a human biology major, um, actually apply with your undergrad to our grad level program from the very beginning and have that guaranteed entrance. So we call them three plus twos. Some really popular integrated degrees are going to be our physician's assistant studies, physical therapy, occupational therapy, master's in counseling psychology, uh, just to name a few. And then creative writing is really, really common in um, popular within our campus community as well. So we require every single student within our campus to complete an internship. With this being said, our staff and faculty are very helpful with helping you all find an internship. So when you're applying to a job, um, since you already had to take three credits at the least of that internship, you already have that firsthand experience. So our students might have worked at Western Psych for um, you know, psychology, or they might have worked at the Pittsburgh Pirates, which he actually had a student do um, for marketing, which is something we're really, really proud of from our students. Uh, a couple other really great 
opportunities that our campus has to offer. We have a 10 to one student to faculty ratio. We offer 10 hours of studying um, tutoring time every single week. And we have a wonderful career development center. We really give you all of the tools to put in your toolbox to make sure that you are successful students. Um, every student also receives a bus pass and a map book, whatever they come onto our campus. So we want to make sure that everyone, like I said, is successful and they're going to have all the resources to get really great grades. We are rolling admissions. So if you haven't applied and you are a senior, you absolutely have that opportunity. Um, and then next year, you uh, as seniors are able to apply at the end of August. Our application process is going to be test blind. So that means that if you haven't taken your SAT or ACTs, that's totally okay. You can still apply to our university for free on the common application or through our chat website as well. Um, that application process is simple and we should, once we receive all of your information, you should have an answer um, within 10 days. You need for your application, one letter of recommendation is recommended, an essay is recommended, and your high school transcript. We view our students holistically um, and are looking at what you've done as a whole. So it's important to tell us a little bit about you, whether it's the clubs you've been a part of, jobs that you've had at home, or even um, within your, your essay interests that you have in the future. So at Chatham, we have some really great clubs that you might be interested in, including uh, we have a criminology club, a cold case files club. Even if you're not interested in criminology or cold case um, as your major, that's okay because we have that for a club. Anything from ukulele club to even Quidditch. We're a really well-rounded campus for being uh, a little bit more small but you have the opportunity to travel elsewhere as well. So every student does receive a $1,200 certificate to study abroad. And we are part of the Pittsburgh Consortium of Higher Education. What that means that is that after your first year or 24 credits received from Chatham, you can take one class a semester at a neighboring university, including University of Pittsburgh, Carnegie Mellon, Point Park, um, Carlo. So this means that you still will have a degree, obviously, from Chatham, but you'll be able to widen your own horizons and take, I don't know, a rebic at Pitt or one of CMU's super amazing computer programs. Um, and that's something that we're really proud of as a Pittsburgh itself, because we work together as opposed to working against each other. And I know that our students use that to the best of their advantage to meet students from all over the world, not only through our school, but through other neighboring schools um, too. Right now we are open for visits. So if you want to plan a fun trip to Pittsburgh, come on in. Um, we have even dorm visits right now, which we're really excited about because they were closed for a while. Uh, so we definitely um, promote our students to come. We have an open campus visit on the 17th. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Next up, we have um, St. Mary's College. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to share my screen also really quick. So just give me one second. Okay. So my name is Claire McNamara, and I am the admissions counselor who is lucky enough to talk with you all today uh, about St. Mary's College. Just a little overview who we are, where we are. There's a few different St. Mary's Colleges out there. We are located in Notre Dame, Indiana, right across the street from the University of Notre Dame. So technically, we are located in Notre Dame, Indiana, for that reason. Um, but we are in the greater South Bend area of the state of Indiana, which is one of the fourth largest cities in Indiana. Um, we also are right on the border of Michigan and about two hours outside of Chicago. So that's kind of a general idea of where we're located. We have about 1,600 students at our school. We are an all women's institution, which is really great. I'm gonna go into that a little bit later on here. Um, and we also have um, a lot to offer in regards to our population. So as you can see in my slide point here, um, we have about two thirds of our students coming from out of state um, with 43 different states and territories represented, 16 different countries represented in that as well. About 20% of our students are from underrepresented populations and 27% are first generation. Um, what I like to say about that, too, um, is that we really are very much discussion-based classes, right? Um, our average class size is about 
teen student faculty student ratio of 10 to 1. So like many of the colleges presenting here today, you're going to have a nice, small, intimate class size where your professor is really going to know your name. And in fact, they are your advisors. Um, so because of that, we have some really great academic excellence going on. Um, and it's very individualized um, with your professors here. We have some of the most popular programs with over you know, 50 different programs available are business, communication studies, chemistry, biology, engineering, which is actually a dual degree program with the University of Notre Dame, speech, a language pathology, which is now a four plus, or is a five plus one, or yeah, four plus one, we just changed that over. So instead of getting your master's degree in two years, um, you're actually going to get it in one year with having, that's an accelerated program for speech pathology. So we're really excited. That was just announced about two weeks ago. Um, but some other things that are we're most well known for is education, as well as nursing. We're actually number three in the state of Indiana for our nursing program and in the top nursing programs nationwide. Um, and some awesome things to happen on our campus too is research. 100% of our students participate in some kind of research, whether you're doing it in the social sciences, natural sciences, theater, anything. Everybody has to do some kind of research or senior comprehensive course. Um, so students have done things in the sciences where they founded patents at the undergraduate level with their professors that tell whether or not medicine being sold is actually medicine. And then we have some other students who have gone um, statewide, nationwide to present about psychology um, that they have taken here at St. Mary's College. So a lot of ways to really be able to dive into what you're passionate about and really get to know yourself and your future career while you're here at St. Mary's College. Um, with the women's college aspect, I know sometimes that that can seem a little bit daunting to people, but let me tell you, um, there's some great stats that you can see on my PowerPoint, but I have, I'm in charge of a lot of different of our student employment um, here in our office. And I always ask them, so like, what's the number one thing that you love about being at a women's college? They're like, Claire, honestly, I absolutely love the fact that I found my voice here because I was okay to be me. I love the fact that I can go to class in my PJs and not care. Um, and what they love too is that it truly, it sounds so cliche, but it really is a sisterhood. It's completely different than anything they've experienced before coming into a college setting where people are so open, they're welcoming, and they truly want you to be a part of this community. Plus, with I, what I said before, we have the University of Notre Dame and Holy Cross College right next door. So our girls always tell me that we have the best of both worlds because it's a small, intimate class sizes. But then you also have guys across the street or right next door if you want them. And it's literally within walking distance. The result of that 95% of our recent grads are employed or enroll in grad school within one year of graduation. Um, we have multiple career fairs to help with that. Our Career Crossings office on campus is amazing. They review resumes, they really prepare you for um, internships, interviews, or even just job interviews, um, grad school, doctorate interviews, prepping those resumes, all that. And those are just some places at the bottom of the PowerPoint slide that you can see that our students have gone to. Um, we always like to say our value is priceless too because 100% of our students receive some kind of financial aid. Um, so the largest this year, um, we range this year from $15,000 to $30,000 in scholarships. And those are based off of merit. So your GPA, if you have class rank, class rank. And if you submit test scores, test scores, we are test optional. We also have four-year promise, where as long as you are doing your part um, and going to class, and there's a few different things listed on our website, right? Um, we promise you're going to graduate in four years, or we will pay for any additional coursework needed for you to get your degree. And again, we're ranked very high in many of our programs, but we are one of the top liberal arts schools, too. Um, in the Midwest, constantly ranked within the top 100. Um, the tri-campus community, um, I mentioned that there is some crossover with the University of Notre Dame. In fact, starting your sophomore year, you can take classes at the University of Notre Dame if you choose. Um, we also have lots of clubs and organizations on our own campus. We have Division Three sport, we have theater productions, lots of different things, socials and dances. Um, and you can participate at Notre Dame too. These are our dates for early decision, regular decision. If you have more questions about them, please let me know. And we hope to see you on campus soon. Thank you so much. Next up, we have University of Toledo. Oh. 
All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Ryan Chernick. Uh, I'm the Mid-Atlantic Regional Recruiter for the University of Toledo. So I'm glad we get to chat today just for a little bit about the University of Toledo and what it means to be a rocket. So jumping right into it, the University of Toledo is one of the public institutions here in the great state of Ohio. We have just about 16,000 undergraduate students, about 4,000 more in our master's, doctorate, professional programs. So just about 20,000 total people on our campus and at our distance learning as well. The University University of Toledo is what we call a comprehensive school. That means we carry a lot of different majors and programs, over 120 different to choose from to be precise. Uh, everything from the STEM sciences all the way through the humanities. We're probably best known for our engineering sciences and the health sciences. Uh, we do own a hospital, the UTMC, University of Toledo Medical Center. And that means that we have things like a medical school, a pharmacy school, PT, OT, PA programs, and then great bridge programs into them from our undergraduate students. But including the humanities, the business, business college, the arts. Uh, if there's anything you're looking to study, really, you can find it with us at the University of Toledo. And if you're not sure, it's great to have this kind of option, these kinds of options, because when you come into the University of Toledo, you can explore all these different great avenues and academic programs, and then find the one that's going to be that best fit. No matter which direction you decide to go, though, you can know and be sure that in your undergraduate program, you're going to get to learn by doing, get that hands-on experience. So my friends going into medicine and going to engineering, going into business or education, whatever the major might be, we're really committed to getting our students good experiential learning opportunities. So co-ops, internships, rotations, clinicals, student teaching, whatever it might be. We want to make sure that you graduate and get your diploma, but also have a resume behind you so you're ready to take on that next challenge, whether it be going directly into employment or going into graduate school or medical school or law school, whatever it might be. We're also a very supportive community, a very supportive university. So we have a lot of first generation students that come to the University of Toledo. Uh, we have students where everyone in the family went to college, but wherever you are in that group, you might need some help through your college career. So it's good to have things like the tutoring center on campus, the advising center on campus. You get a success coach as well to help you through your undergraduate to career to understand the different resources you have through the university. So if you come out to Ohio, you know you're not alone. You do have a very diverse community of people there to support you through your academic and personal growth in your undergraduate career. That's kind of the other big reason people choose the University of Toledo, right? We have a lot of majors, well-respected programs, a lot of good opportunities to do that hands-on learning, but it's also an amazing community. We're a Division I university, so Division I athletics. We compete in the Mid-American Conference, the MAC Conference, so it's a very spirited school. People love the colors. We're proud to be Rockets and wear the blue and gold, um, so it's a very exciting campus to be on, and while I'm not on campus as much anymore now that I live outside of Washington, D.C., I still always love going back and really feeling that, that energy of a larger institution, of a larger school. Over 400 different student organizations to choose from, different ways to get involved, different different interest groups, social clubs, special interest groups. So whatever it might be, whatever kind of career you're looking to forward or interest you're looking to foster, you can again do that here at the University of Toledo. Here is what our campus looks like. I know it's beautiful. You don't have to say it out loud or anything, but this is really what you would consider as a classic university layout. So it's not like we're sprawled throughout the city of Toledo. We're really kind of captured into our own campus. A lot of green spaces. You see the athletic facilities there in the north, a lot more of the academic facilities down there in the south. The city of Toledo uh, is actually the fourth largest city in the state of Ohio. It's got about 275,000 people throughout the greater Toledo area. But downtown Toledo, where I actually used to live, is about 10 minutes from where this picture is. So you have your real college campus and then the city life and all the activities that go with being in a sort of a mid-major market with you as well. We're only about an hour away from Detroit, about two hours from Columbus and Cleveland, four hours from Chicago, and about three and a half from Cincinnati. So plenty of different places to go and visit and explore. Now we are, of course, an out-of-state university for most everyone here today in the chat, but it's good to know that we do have a very supportive financial aid structure as well. So for all my students coming into the University of Toledo, you can look forward to receiving the Rocket Nation Award, which is about $8,500 a year, every year for four years guaranteed. Then there are also the merit scholarships. Those are based on your grades, depending what your GPA and your ACT score are. You can look forward to receiving one of those awards Awards as well. This really cuts down on the cost for my out-of-state students, and it's why we get to be competitive with other schools in state, in Virginia, and Maryland, and D.C., or, or whatever state that you might be in. So I cover everything from Maine down to Florida, over to Texas, up to Colorado. So all those students find opportunities and good financial balance through the University of Toledo. We do review applications all year long. So if you're a junior,
junior. We'll open those up in August of 2021. And you can apply traditionally or test optionally without a test score. It's up to you, totally fine. You can do it through our website or through the Common App. We do use both. Now you can only cover so much in six minutes as you all are learning right now. So if you'd like to know some more information, please feel free to scan that QR code right there or go to the URL at the bottom. I'll give you a quick tip. You can also just go to our website, utilita.edu, and you'll get to fill out this exact same information card so you can get some more in-depth information about the school. Maybe take a visit. We'd love to see you there. I'll post my contact information in the chat, but this is really a school worth exploring. If you've never heard of the University of Toledo before, there's a reason people are excited to be Rockets, and I would love to share that with all of you. Thank you so much for your time, and go Rockets! Thank you. Next up, we have University of South Carolina. Hey, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Sorry, let me get my, sheen, my screen shared. Excuse me. <clears throat> so thank you. So like I said, my name is Scott Goldberg. I'm a, a regional admissions representative with the University of South Carolina. Uh, of course, we are going to be that out-of-state school for all of y'all. Um, so let's just go through some of this. I'm sorry. Let me try and get this presentation to go. There we go. So a little bit about our school. We are a school of about 27,000 students about 35,000 total, including our graduate population. Uh, so we are a little bit bigger, but what I do have to point out with this is that there is a strong sense of community. Now, I was actually an alum of the University of South Carolina. Uh, the majority of your classes will still be pretty small. So of course, if you're freshman year, you're taking some intro classes, you're taking some general education courses. Those can tend to be a little bit bigger, um, but when you're taking your major specific courses, those will be significantly smaller. My freshman year, I had courses that were about 30 to 40, 50 students, a couple that were about 100. My sophomore and junior year, most of them were about 30. My senior year, I had a class of eight people in it, uh, which is really exciting. Now, we do have a strong out-of-state population uh, of students at our campus. So about 42% of our students are coming from out-of-state. I, myself, was an out-of-state student coming from New Hampshire down in South Carolina. But we do have students from all 50 states, over 100 countries worldwide. And we are really proud of that kind of geographic diversity we have at the University of South Carolina. Now, this is, of course, about finding your home away from home. So no matter where you're coming from, it's definitely there's something for you here. You're going to find people from where you're from, from places all over the country. My freshman year neighbor was from Alaska, and I was really surprised that he was there. Um, but it's really cool to get to know people from all over the country, all over the world. Now, a little bit about Columbia itself, because we are right in the heart of Columbia, South Carolina. And so actually, what I want to point out is my Zoom background. This is the center of campus. Uh, this is about a five to 10 minute walk from downtown Columbia from the state Capitol building. But what's nice is that it still has a separation feeling. So you're on a college campus. You're not in the middle of downtown. But if you want to get to that top right corner uh, on the screen here, you can get there in about 10 minutes. And so it's really nice that it's right there. So you have elements of the city and the school. So being in the capital city of South Carolina, of course, we have a lot of opportunities for internships for co-ops. Our school is very big on internships. We really want students to have that real world experience before they graduate. Uh, so most programs will actually require that you complete at least one internship. Some are required too, but that's only a small handful. Um, there's also a lot of things going on in Columbia. We have art, food, culture festivals. There are museums, there's shopping. There's a few different districts. Um, as I like to call them, Columbia is a pretty small city. So district might be a little generous. Um, there's a 12 mile river walk along the river, which is about, again, five minutes from campus, which is really nice. So there's a lot of things going on. We have politicians come through every year, comedians, actors. Uh, we have different musical groups. Beyonce and Jay-Z came through Columbia a couple years ago. Uh, we have Hootie and the Blowfish here all the time, of course, being alumni of the university. Darius Rucker comes through all the time, does free concerts. So there's always something going on uh, on campus and in the city. Now, of course, a little bit more about the academic side of what you're going to school for. Uh, we are Carnegie Tier 1 Research University. So that just means our faculty are constantly engaged in research, doing different projects. And these are all things that our undergraduate students can get involved in. Um, so there's different research projects. You can work with your own professor. You can work with other professors, other fields. Um, there's a lot of different options. We have an office of undergraduate research that you can reach out to if that's something you're interested in. We have 56 nationally ranked programs, a student to faculty ratio of about 17 to one. And so that's part of the reason why, like I mentioned earlier, our course sizes are significantly smaller than you might expect at a school of our size. Now we have 100 different unique degree programs. We have 324 unique combinations of major, double major, minors, cognates, special areas of focus. So we have it all, we have it all. And I actually, from this next slide, I believe we can check out some of our colleges. 
So if you want to study biochemical engineering, you can absolutely do that. If you want to be a dance performance major, you can do that. Iowa's hospitality management, or if you're interested in sport management, we have that available as well. So there's tons of different things available at the University of South Carolina. A little bit of something for everyone. Uh, you are also able to come in undeclared. And then by the end of your freshman year, you would need to pick a major at that point. Now, for the Carolina elite, this is a different subset of students. So there's top scholars, which is a subset of the Honors College, and then there's also Capstone. Now, the Honors College is a four-year program. There is an additional application or a supplemental application, and that is focused mostly on the academic side of things. So you're going to have extra courses that are offered only to honor students. There'll be additional opportunities to study abroad for some undergraduate research. Um, there, you'll get a second advisor. And like I said, that is an application that you do need to submit, or as opposed to the capstone program, which is a two year program, a little bit more focused on the outside of the classroom experience, things like networking, undergraduate research, leadership experience. Those are what will make up the capstone program, and that is by invite only. So just by applying to the university, you're automatically considered for capstone and you just receive a notice that says, hello, congratulations, you've been invited to capstone. Now, student life is very active on campus. Of course, we are that state school, so sometimes I know I'll hear from some of my students out in Texas who are wondering, is campus quiet? Do people go home on the weekends? Some do, but the large, the vast majority of students are staying on campus just because we have so many different things going on. We have more than 500 different student organizations. We have 19 Division I sports. Uh, we are in the Division I and the SEC, so the Southeastern Conference. Um, so we, that's a major part. So every football game at home is very popular. And so all those things are keeping our students coming back to the university. Now, just some key deadlines I want to keep in mind. We are on a deadline, so we're not a rolling application. Early action is a non-binding application. Then the regular application is due December 1st with honors in between on November 15th. If you guys have any questions, always feel free to reach out to myself. I'm going to put my contact information in the chat here in just a second, or reach out to your territory's representative, and we're always happy to help you out. But thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you so much. And at this time, we, we do have a little bit of extra time. Uh, so we're going to move into what we call here at Stripe Skin a round robin question um, session. So if I could ask all of our representatives, um, admissions representatives, to join me on camera. We're going to go in the order of which you all presented. Um, so starting with um, with Newman University, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Uh, I would say just, you know, take your time through it. I mean, I know that's kind of it's counterintuitive to our jobs on our end, but take your time through it. Don't feel like you need to rush into the thing. I mean, you have, I mean, really kind of figure out what you want to do and just sort of, you know, get everything done, but, you know, figure out what you want to do and just don't second guess it also. Just kind of be confident with your answer and don't, you know, it is your decision, not your mom's, not your dad's, not your best friend's, it's your decision. So make what's best for you, whatever that may be. Arcadia University. I would say to visit campuses once you kind of narrow your list of schools down, whether that's virtually or in person, and just be open-minded when you're on campus because you can really get a good feel of what it would be like to be a student on that campus when you visit. Chatham University. I would say, do you feel at home at the campus you're visiting? It's really important to visit. So can you picture yourself living there for four years? Because if that answer is no, um, then you should probably look elsewhere. Uh, so try not to convince yourself that it's a place for you. You'll feel that fit once you enter onto that right campus. St. Mary's College. Yeah, I would honestly say apply to where it's gonna best fit you. Go on to, I think, like College Board has a great like filtering system of like colleges throughout the US that really suits you and your learning style and what you need. Don't just apply to things just because your friends are going there, you've got a boyfriend or girlfriend going someplace. This is about you and your career. So make sure that you're picking it for that reason. University of Toledo. Yeah, I would say uh, build a relationship to some degree with your admissions person at your schools that you're looking at, you know, talk to us. Sometimes you can see, you know, we're all pretty friendly people. So we like to talk and chat and get to know you. And we do generally all look out for your best interests as well. And, and so I love YouTube, you love YouTube, everybody loves YouTube, but don't just YouTube, you know, what's the secret to college admissions? You can just ask us and we're going to tell you um, and give you the best, most relevant information for our institution. It's, it's all a little different and it can be confusing, but the more you get to know 
us, the more that we can get to know you and we can really help aid you in that admissions process. University of South Carolina. I think uh, if you have the opportunity, it's always great to reach out to a current student at a university you might be looking to. We offer some, a lot of schools offer a program where you can reach out to current students. And it's cool to be able to say like, what are you doing today? What classes are you going to? What, how was the game last night? Um, and they can give you a little bit of insight of what campus is like right now. But again, like some of the other reps have mentioned tonight or today, uh, it, you want to make sure it's something that fits you just because your sibling or your parent or your friend went there and really liked it doesn't mean it's the same for you, but it can be nice to have that insight as well. So our next question, what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? We'll start back with Newman University. So on the last day of classes, we have this thing called best day ever. It's kind of a big celebration at the end of the year. Um, we bring in food trucks and we have a bunch of events going on around campus. It's, again, it's to celebrate, you know, the end of the year, it's time to give our students kind of a nice little, you know, celebration before they start going to finals and finals week. But it is, it is honestly the best day ever, and all the students love it and really look forward to it at the end of, at the end of the spring semester. Arcadia University. So as an alum, this is such a hard question because I love every tradition at Arcadia, but I think I'd probably have to say spring fling. Um, so every year, once the weather starts getting nicer um, near the end of the semester, we have a three day event that's um, a carnival Woodstock where they bring like really famous bands onto campus. Um, and then there's a bunch of like fun games like bubble soccer, food trucks, things like that. So that's probably one of my favorites. Chatham University. I, it's not like a, a tradition, let's say, but it's a, something our students do every single year when it snows. We have a huge hill, so they'll set up um, hay bales so they don't like fly off into their road and they sled down this huge hill using whatever they can find. Um, and I just think it's uh, something fun that I always see every single year. St. Mary's College. So um, one of my favorite traditions that we have here um, is based off of our community and we want to be as welcoming as possible. So the beginning um, during your first um, orientation week, um, we actually have students come into a circle with current students and new students and they're, it's the closing of a circle. And so you all get in a circle and you have like the ceremony of welcoming. And then at graduation, you make the circle again, but it's the opening of a circle to let all the seniors out. Um, so it's really sweet. University of Toledo. My personal favorite, and this isn't unique, but my personal favorite is homecoming. Homecoming, wherever you go, is just a lot of fun and it's fun to see all the alumni come back and there's a big game and so it's a lot of energy, but more specific to you Toledo, um, there's something called a big event and it's a big one day of service. So all the student organizations find ways to say thank you to the Toledo community. So it's usually about seven to 10,000 hours of service combined within one day because all of our students find their own little unique projects. Amazing, South, uh, University of South Carolina. So my favorite uh, event is called Tiger, or tradition that we have at USC is called Tiger Burn. Uh, this takes place the Monday before our last football game of the year, our rivalry game with Clemson University. Um, and our engineering students actually build a 30 foot tall tiger. And we have a big bonfire pep rally. Uh, the president comes out and gives a speech. The football team gives out and the coach gives a speech. Uh, cheerleaders are there, the marching band is there. So it's just really a big pep rally and that's a lot of fun. Um, and it gets very warm depending on how close you are. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a big fire. Um, well, I first and foremost wanna thank our wonderful presenters today and, and for your insight and your knowledge and for sharing that with our participants today. And thank you for tuning in and joining us. When you close this window, there will be a very quick four question survey. We'd really appreciate any feedback you can provide. Um, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other session recordings at strivescan.com backslash PCA. CAC. And again, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure and go and sign up for more. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.